Good evening and welcome to the Shelburne Select Board meeting of Tuesday, November 26, 2019, which I now call to order. The first item on the agenda is to approve it. Uh, in this uh, tonight, Jamie will not be present. Colleen, as you may already have heard, is present on the phone. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Mike moves. Second. Mary seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 Colleen? Aye. Aye. And those disapproving, nay? The ayes have it. Thank you. The next item is to approve select board meeting minutes of November 12th, 2019. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Mary moves. I'll second. Mike seconds. Is there any discussion? Colleen, anyone? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. Colleen, you voted aye. Aye. Thank you. Next item are public comments. Or does anyone have a comment? Linda? Linda Real Falls Road. I'm just wondering what heats the new library. What's the heating system? The heating system in the new building is uh, are their series of heat pumps, electrically powered heat pumps throughout the building. There is still some backup system, especially to help with the historic town hall being a big building. But the primary system are electric heat pumps. Okay. Any other public comments? Hearing none, seeing no hands, the next item are select board comments. Oh, if my colleagues are okay with it, I'll lead off. Uh, this is the Thanksgiving week, and our wish, and I'm sure we all uh, feel it, is that everyone has a reason to be thankful. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, this also is almost, within a few days, the anniversary of Lee's uh, uh, contracting as the town manager. Uh, there will be a formal evaluation by us at a point here in the next several weeks, but it should not go without saying that this has been, uh, in my own view, and, and our, my colleagues can speak for themselves, uh, uh, a, a greatly successful and so be it uh, an exciting year. Uh, and not, not by any means the least because of Lee's dedication uh, the, his uh, his diligence, uh, uh, his his insight, I think his uh, his manner of being, have all been very telling this year in terms of this, of the success that we feel we've had. So congratulations to him. Thank now, you. I say all this before we do the evaluation, but that doesn't mean any understood any message should be drawn. Uh, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I thought I would pause to thank my colleagues for creating a amicable and collegial working environment. Thanking Lee and Peter and Dean and the town staff for creating a, uh, a town that's really fun to work with. And everybody who's been here regularly for keeping your eyes and ears open and voicing your opinions on the town. So seven months in, it's been a really great working experience. I just wanted to thank everybody for making it a lot of fun. Wait until next month. Yes. <laughs> I'm saying that before these the budget. Pre, yeah. These are pre-budget comments. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of comments. First, um, I wanted to uh, say that I think that add to the stop signs, whoever did that, is really great. If you've noticed the pole that the stop sign's on now has red reflective material on it, which I think is really helpful. I really appreciate that. And the, uh, that came up right after our discussion two, two was it two weeks ago or yep, yeah, two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago already yeah. well, um, about the Bay Road underpass. And I think that's going to help uh, make it a safer uh, way to travel. And I just noticed that there's the same thing on the uh, Falls Road, Marset Road intersection there and I think that's a big help. The other thing I wanted to mention is that next Tuesday, Wednesday, next Wednesday is Button Up Shelburne. Yes. And it's in the evening and 
Do you know exactly when in yes. what, the, uh, where? Yes, 6.30 in the evening in the community room at the library. Yeah, I would encourage everybody to come. I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to learn more about uh, energy efficiency uh, in Shelburne, in your own homes. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Mary. Colleen? Do you have any uh -oh. comment? Sorry, that's me. I'm trying to find my phone so I can turn it off. There it is. Peter, do you have any insight on this? I couldn't connect with Colleen no matter what. I can call Colleen back on here. Here. Sorry, somehow we lost you. Back? That's okay. I like I I heard um all of Jerry's comments and um and most of mine. You want to repeat yours for Colleen's benefit? Sure. Um I Colleen, hi, this is Mary. I was just commenting uh on two things. The uh, addition of the red reflective material on the pole that the stop signs are on, I find really helpful, particularly the one uh, on the Bay Road Railroad underpass. And then I also wanted to remind people that next Wednesday is Button Up Shelburne. Uh, it's a, I think it's a program uh, underwritten or supplied by Efficiency Vermont, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to be at the community room in the library at 630 next Wednesday, yes. December 4th. 4th, 4th. Lost her again. So, is there something you'd like to, to comment on, Colleen? Oh, um, about Thanksgiving and Mike's as well, and I just echo those. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Are we all set? All right, the next item is the town manager report. Thank you. A number of, of items. Again, I think we all have a lot to be grateful for over this past year or more. Uh, next week on Friday evening will also be the community tree lighting ceremony over at the town green, and that will be at 530 in the evening. So we'll have the annual celebration over there. Uh, I'd like to recognize Sergeant Josh Flory of our police department for 25 years of service to the town. It's quite an accomplishment. Uh, as you know, we had a visit earlier this year from VOSHA, looking at all of our town departments. We've been making, we still haven't received the formal evaluation from them, but in the meantime, we are, we've already started to make progress on improving various procedures and documentation and safety practices. And Nini's taken the lead to help us form a safety committee. We've met twice. We'll meet monthly while everything ramps up and then probably scale that back, but continue to make improvements along the way and keep us all safe and healthy. Uh, in the wastewater realm, as you know, we had a significant study done about a year ago looking at various options for the existing wastewater plants and the potential of shipping our, pumping our waste to South Burlington. Uh, we issued a request for qualifications for engineering firms to take a fresh look at that, make sure we looked at all the assumptions thoroughly and accurately before making a commitment that we would need to make next June to South Burlington if indeed we were going to pursue that option. So we'll be reporting back to the board and the public on that as that study moves forward. Uh, for example, you know, that looked at the cost of building a pipeline to Bartlett Bay but it didn't necessarily look at all the easements or rights of way that might be needed and whose properties that would travel through. That's not a criticism of the prior study. It was done with a certain amount of, of limitation, but there are some important aspects of that that we need to mm -hmm. study further before committing to one, one uh, path or another. And just as a reminder, and I'll be getting you those documents shortly, we did warn we will be warning a meeting on the revised stormwater ordinance for January 21. We agreed to do that at a recent meeting, and I'll be getting you those full, fully formed documents, and we'll be getting some more information out to the public about the changes made since version one 
that I think folks will find ease the path forward in that regard. Um, Mary mentioned the button up workshop that's hosted by the town co and also with help from Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission and Efficiency Vermont. And that'll be a workshop on home weatherization and the whole array of possibilities people might take to save energy, save money, and also be highlighting some of the rebates that may still be available and the incentives for people to make those improvements. And I think that's, that's good for tonight. That, Thank you. Uh, has uh, South Burlington, uh, that's the study, their planning study, is that underway? I mean, it, it is. That was going to conclude early next year. Yes. Wasn't it? So they agreed to include us in the initial engineering analysis, yeah. but by roughly the middle of next year, we'd need to commit yeah. both decision wise and potentially with some funding if we were actually going to share some costs in that engineering analysis. Yeah. So um, that's the timeline, rough timeline that we've been working with. Yeah. Okay. Also just wanted to give a quick update, if I may, on the Fire Rescue Healthy Living Project. We had a very productive meeting with uh, Bob Bouchard of Pizzagalli Properties, who is the developer for the healthy living part of the project. And the site analyses are now well underway toward getting us the answers we need to know whether to warn that for a bond vote for purchase. I see this is a pretty dramatic cleanup at the site. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean... Uh, can I uh, I wanted to make a comment that um, I've been impressed with Bob Bouchard's sensitivity to our concerns about being responsible um, you know caretakers of town money he seems to be clued into the issues which was nice I also wanted to ask um, last meeting some residents from Davis Park came to ask about the sidewalk I was curious if anything had kind of happen there? Or? Yeah, so we have taken a look at that. In fact, before even they had come here, we had, Paul and I had taken a look at that. So the challenge there is, even if we want it, it's not just stripes on the road. It would involve probably rough estimate five to $6,000 worth of sidewalk changes to make the accessible ramps fit together. Yeah. So between seasonality and the need, I, I felt that we really need to consider that in the context of our overall budget for next year, since we can't build it tomorrow, even if we had the money. But you know, we've got other people with other requests for other pedestrian sorts of improvements, and I think we need to look at those holistically and not just kind of sure. ping pong one at a time. Because yeah. So that's not a judgment on whether that's useful and necessary, but you know, we've spent at least or more of the money allocated in this year's budget for bike path pad improvements, whether on Falls Road or the Bay Road sure. path. One of, the, one of the suggestions they raised several times, especially in the written material, was to address parking. Uh, now, that would be something we could do independent of, of, uh, of uh, at roughly, at, at, at virtually no expenditure by simply making a change in the ordinance. Is that a correct reasonable? We could approach the school with that question about what their thoughts would be about that. Okay. And then it begs the enforcement question. But yes, we could yeah. we could modify the parking ordinance and adjust things. So there potentially we could money. we could we could be that that responsive in a short shorter period of time. Yes. Yeah. I'll talk to the principal about what their thoughts would be on, on the parking question. I did approach them on the potential for a cost-sharing arrangement if they felt this crosswalk was very important and wanted to accelerate it, but they didn't um, demonstrate an interest or ability to help fund that. Thanks. And Thanks, Peter, Peter also had hoped to offer some insights on that fiscal study that was referenced on VT Digger recently, where yeah. allegedly Shelburne was not in great shape. Oh, great. I had questions about this, too. As Lee mentioned, there was an article in VT Digger or where they had contracted with some consultants to look at uh, a number of towns, primarily in Chittenden County, although throughout Vermont, in terms of rating them statistically, in terms of um, 
how resilient they were, um, stable they were, that sort of thing. Um, Shelburne was in the middle of the list in rankings. Um, and we just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the, the study and what was considered in it and sort of our reaction to, uh, to what they were presenting. Um, the study was really based on financial ratios, which are pretty typical in governmental accounting. Um, there are a number of ratios that can be done to measure um, the town's fiscal position, um, budgeting percentages, things like that. Um, they typically use the f a couple of financial ratios, um, but there are certainly others to consider that they didn't mention, things you know, that determine the stability of a town, the re its resilience, if you will, in terms of being able to uh, uh, to encounter financial challenges and, and what position they are financially as a result of those. So it, things like but the study didn't really get into, but I think are important more than just the fund balance statistic at all, which is pretty much what they were focusing on. Um, you really want to look at cons factors like unemployment in the, in the municipality, composition of the grand list. Do you have it focused on one big large property, a manufacturer, let's say, that could have difficulties? Um, condition of town assets, that's also important. It's easy to scrimp on maintenance, but have a healthy fund balance. But again, that will come back to uh, be an issue um, if the assets aren't maintained properly. So again, just a broader picture in terms of, of the status of a municipality is more than just a couple of ratios that were considered in the study. The study looked at four different categories, or five different categories that were scored. Um, and Shelburne in two of those five categories was low, and that's why we, we were ended up in sort of the middle of the pack. Um, it really focused on um, the fund balance and net position in terms of what's the financial fund balance of the municipality and what is that as terms of a percentage of its, its, uh, its, percentage of its expenditures. And that's a traditional st statistic that you look at. What's your surplus at the end of the year? How does that compare to what your expenditures are? It's a definite benchmark that you want to look at, but certainly not the only one. So what do we mean by the fund balance? Um, fund balance is basically on your balance sheet. It's your assets and your liabilities. Take the difference between the two, and the, and the difference is where your net position is. Assets minus liabilities, hopefully it's a positive number, obviously, um, and where, that, where you fall in that calculation, and what the trend is, too. You really can't just look at one year. You really want to look at several years in terms of how the trends are moving. Um, our audit is always done as of June 30th. That's typically when that calculation of fund balance is done. All the bills are paid, all the revenues are in, where did you end up at the end of the year? Um, but it's not a cash balance. Fund balance is not how much cash we have in the bank. You can't go to Colleen Haig and say, how much do we have in our fund balance account? Um, it's not a cash amount. The biggest um, issue to point out, taxes owed but not paid. They're on the balance sheet as assets. They're owed to the town. We don't have them yet, but they are counted in terms in the calculation. Money that's owed to us, uh, but we don't necessarily have yet, but it's still an asset. Now back in 2011, um, it's a recommendation that um, towns have a policy on developing what their fund balance is going to be, what's their target, um, and we didn't have one. And in 2011, uh, by town charter, um, we did uh, vote to have a fund balance. Um, and it's now set by charter to maintain a 5% fund balance. And that would basically mean um, where your net assets minus liabilities divided by your expenses. So where did you end up at the end of the year divided by your expenses? Um, we wanted to maintain a 5% threshold. That's our cushion, if you will, um, to anticipate unexpected expenditures that come up um, down the road, something unexpected that happens, so that you can absorb those kinds of things. So the charter, the, the way the charter document worked is that we would maintain a 5% fund balance and anything above that should be spent on items in the capital improvement plan. That was the thinking at the time. Um, we might want to think about reconsidering some of that at this point. The, the reason we got to 5% um, at that time was some board members felt we didn't need a fund balance. Just if something happens, you pay for it and you move on. 
Others suggested there should be a cushion there. 10% was typically a, a typical uh, percentage that municipalities used at that time. So we had a 5% and a 0% and the average between the two was, or 10% and a 0% average between the two was 5%. That's where we ended up in that charter um, that took place. 10% would probably be a little bit more realistic in, in this day and age, but that's again something that we can talk about. Probably a lot of the municipalities in the study had a fund balance policy of, of close to 5%. It's pretty typical. Um, in our case, it was, it was determined to be 5 um, and that's where we ended up. At the end of last fiscal year, we don't have the audit completed um, for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019, but our fund balance at that point was $634,000. Again, that's assets minus liabilities. That was 7.9% of our expenditures um, at that point in time. Again, probably low by some standards if you want to maintain a 10%, but 634000 as a cushion. And again, it's not real cash, but at least a position where we're at. Um, that's where we were at the time. Um, and that was actually in a year when we had just gone through our fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018. We had about $200,000 of over expenditures and legal expenses that year. And even with that, we had a, a $634,000 fund balance that was above the threshold of the charter set. Um, so again, that's something to also point out in terms of why it might have been lower than otherwise. Um, that's why you kind of want to look at trends for these types of things. So just briefly, some of the takeaways from looking at the study. Um, again, it was kind of selective in terms of the statistics they were looking at. They didn't really look at a broad perspective, things like unemployment, um, what are your major industries, what's their risk, that kind of thing. Um, but again, it's something that it's definitely the calculation was correct. The numbers in there were correct in terms of what they presented. Um, it's something that we should be monitoring and considering um, to determine whether we want to include, increase the threshold at some point. And again, it really doesn't show what the true picture of the town is because you really need to look at your existing assets and what the condition is of those. Do we really think that uh, compare Shelburne's roads to some of the surrounding towns that rated higher? Essex Junction comes to mind. Um, they have some rough roads there. They rated higher than us. Again, you really need to look at the big picture. Um, I think we do. We have some pretty excellent roads in town, and. Um, I think that, that should be factored into it as well, as well as the diversity of our grand list. Um, our largest property values are with two retirement communities and then some utilities um, as well in town, fairly stable versus a large factory that may be subject to economic cycles. So those kinds of things need to be looked at as well. So we're not, we're not disputing what was in the study. Um, I'm not sure the rating system was very clear in terms of what they determined as being marginally um, on the edge of instability. That wasn't really very clear. I don't think there's any standards out there that I know of. Certainly consultants can come up with those, but um, as far as universally, I'm not aware of anything that, that categorizes things that way. Um, but again, something to keep in mind. Um, why was Williston at the top of the list in terms of their financial position? You can probably guess. It's their local sales tax. Um, in that fiscal year, they had a million dollars more in sales tax than they had budgeted. That went right to their fund balance. So that kind of a factor can certainly help the financial position of a town. Uh, whereas we don't have that kind of diversity. Um, if we're increasing our fund balance, it would probably include part of the tax rate uh, to do that. So again, just a brief summary of what was in the article. Um, certainly we're, you know, we're mindful of what was in it and cognizant of that and fund balance is something that we do want to keep an eye on. So just a brief summary just for your information. Can I ask a question? Um, what is the difference between an unrestricted fund balance and a, say a restrict, I'm assuming there's something like a restricted mm -hmm. fund balance? Yeah, unrestricted is basically everything that's left over at the end of the year that isn't committed to something. Restricted would be we put money aside for like highway equipment replacement, police cruisers. Those are funds and they're restricted just for that purpose. But if you take away all of those, then what's left, the basic left sur the surplus hopefully that's left at the end of the year, 
That would be unrestricted. So, so it's free so for any So if our use. charter says we should um, put anything above 5% towards capital improvement, what accounts for the extra 2.9? Um, what I do is I look ahead at the next budget year. I don't want to say, okay, June 30th, we're over 5%, so let's do something. We really have to look at the next budget coming up and oh, what the pluses and minuses are there. So I, I don't look at it at one point in time. It's more of a trend type of thing. It doesn't take much to bring it down, obviously, if you have a bad year. So, um, yeah. And, and just as a last, I'm assuming that the the benefits of having a higher in reserve is that cash on hand is less expensive than cash that we needed to generate? It can be more attractive. That's one of the things the lender looks at if you're borrowing. Um, but again, keep in mind it's not cash. Right. Some of it's Absolutely. money owed that's right. not collected yet. Right. Um, but but the rationale for having a higher fund balance would be right. would make that's, it easier. That's the resiliency part that they talked about in, in the article. How can you withstand an unexpected downturn? Right. Major Major business leaves the area or something like that. Great. So, thank so you. that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. That was very, very. helpful. Um, I don't have any questions. I have a, a comment, which is, yeah, Williston probably comes out ahead, but um, Williston is a different community than Shelburne. I mean, it's apples and oranges, really. We don't have, how many box stores do they have there? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so to, you can't really draw a straight line comparison between all of these towns. So I agree. And I know that a local option tax has come up in the past. And I must say, I'm glad it's not up right now, just because I wouldn't want to be sitting here to have to make that decision, because I know it would be very controversial in Shelburne. So, and I understand it would only raise an extra $150,000 a year, roughly, based on commerce that's conducted here, so, you know. Do we know, Peter, here is a question, how much the uh, library or town center bond uh, impacted our rating? Um, yep. Yeah, we're not, oh, in term, rating in terms of this? Our financial strength, yes. Um, this was before really the okay. library bond. It was a fiscal year ending 2018, so that was really yeah, before, before really we in. had yeah. the full bond in place. But um, I don't see it affecting our position because again it's it's debt but um, again it's revenue minus expenses so um, I don't expect it will imp impact that at all. Thanks for taking the time to prepare this. Sure. Yeah thank you Peter and Lee we appreciate that. Uh, I'm sure there were questions in the community as well. Um, I, I thought the intention of the of the article was was uh, was uh, admirable. I mean, it was a, a very interesting take on on uh, preparation for uh, what you you what most people c couldn't disagree is going to be a downturn in the economy at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, as healthy as this region is, and and cons and uh, exceptional in terms of, of gross economic. Uh, 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 developments uh, will feel it too. I mean, just as other communities in Vermont are already feeling it, some of them have been feeling it for a long time. But, but um, t to me, uh, there was a ghost factor here too, and that is uh, the capacity to pay. Uh, there's no rating on capacity. We would pride ourselves on our capacity to pay. Uh, it's a lot of what people feel Shelburne means, but. Uh, that's a two-edged sword in a sense because sitting here with budget in front of us, uh, you can't give in to capacity to pay. You've got to maintain uh, an outlook that uh, every buck is hard won and, and not easily found and uh, no matter uh, what reputation or how the community looks. So it was kind of interesting to me that um, uh, if you had run uh, uh, run th those number of communities through some kind of filter called capacity to pay, you would find uh, you know a, a, a very different ordering of events. So uh, I think it I think it keeps us uh, mindful of the fact that our capacity to pay is probably our greatest asset. It doesn't translate to a dollar on a balance sheet, but. Uh, it's what gives the community the stability and uh, confidence uh, to take on, uh, on on new things necessarily, and 
so I, I, I thought later that uh, this is a pretty good uh, message to us. So, but we thank you. Thank you, Lee. I know you worked Peter. on it too. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Colleen, any comments? No, I just, I'm glad that we're talking about this now, and um, and definitely thank Peter for his um, explanation. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Thanks again. Anything further? Hearing none, the next item is a public hearing regarding a request for a waiver of impact fees. We will uh, move mm -hmm. to enter that public hearing, uh, and, and uh, I invite a motion to that effect. So moved. Mary moves. I'll second. Mike seconds to enter public hearing to consider a request for with the waiver of impact fees. Do you want to? Do we vote on it? Um, oh, that yeah. would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Just, just curious. <laughs> those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Colleen, you're voting aye. Aye. Thank you. Now. Now we open the hearing. Thank you. So by brief introduction, um, you heard a request by the landowner, Ellie Byers, at a recent meeting expressing concerns about a roughly $1,700 impact fee related to her condominium project. She had bought two adjoining condominium units at some point in the past, combined them into one, and seeks now to separate those again into two units. Um, you'd heard an opinion from staff that this constituted new development under the impact fee ordinance and was therefore subject to the fees. Upon conversation, the board agreed to hold a hearing and consider the question more formally as provided in the ordinance. Um, I believe Ellie has a representative here to speak to it, and I have my own recommendation after you've taken whatever other information or testimony you may have. I have a point of order, sort of. Are, are we considering this appeal an appeal under the impact fee ordinance? Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Would you like to well, speak for... Ellie is out of town, so she has to meet her statement. Would you, would you like to give the, us in the audience your name as you... Yeah, I can. She asked me to read it from the top. Does it have to be that formal? I don't know. Um, my name is Terry Lassard, and I live also at Harbor Crossings Condo. Um, so her, this is her letter in request of this. Um, good evening. My name is, I don't know if I need to stand here. Do I need to stand here? Um, good evening. My name is Terry Lassard, and Ellie Byers and I are our dear friends as well as family. I am here representing Ellie tonight as she was called to California on a family matter. The following is a statement written by Ellie regarding her impact fee waiver request. I reside at Harbor Crossings, a small condominium development of 22 units located off School Street next to next door to the Shelburne Community School built circa 1984. In June of 2000, I purchased number 12 Creekside Drive, a condominium of Harbor Crossings. In June of 2007, I purchased an adjoining condominium, number 10 Creekside Drive, and secured the necessary permits from both the Town of Shelburne and Harbor Crossings Homeowners Association to remove the walls between the two condominiums to convert them into one large unit. To meet town and fire regulations at the time, the kitchen in number 10 was removed along with the walls. The footprint of the unit remained unchanged. I am now in the process of reinstalling the kitchen of number 10 and putting the walls back up to convert the condominiums back to two separate units for sale. Um, and the sale of number 10 is going to finance my son's college education. In the process of acquiring the pro proper building permits from the town of Shelburne, which has been successfully secured, I learned that I would be charged, in addition to the building permit, an impact fee of um, $1,700 because I was adding a dwelling to the town. For the past 12 years, I have paid additional taxes to the town of Shelburne, the same as I would have had one unit been two. It is worth noting that number 10 is currently under contract to be sold to a couple in their mid to late 60s with no children residing at home. I am respectfully asking for a waiver of the impact fee because I am simply returning the unit back to its pre-existing floor plans and footprint 
floor plans that existed for 23 years prior to the conversion of the two units into one in, 19, in 2012. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. So I'm happy to take any questions, but I <laughs> think thank you, you get the idea. And she has um, copies of this letter if you would like them or not. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Makes Thank you. I hope this one's easier. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. I'm sure Ellie was, you know, was very thankful that you were willing to step in her, her stead. You know. Is there any other comment? Hearing none, is there a motion to close the hearing? I have um, some questions. Well, Lee, Lee wanted to, I think Lee, you, you said you were going to make a recommendation, or do we close the hearing first? Well, I have some questions, so yeah. I think it would be premature to close the hearing. Okay. I would like to know, I'm not sure if there's anyone in the audience who can answer the question, if numbers 10 and 12 remain distinctly numbered during the course of the last seven years. Yeah, they did. Actually, the numbers are out on the outside of the condos. Those never came down. And Ellie received her mail at 10 12 on Creekside. Thank you. I would also like to know if Ms. Byers has paid the um, impact fee. Because as I read the statute, in order to appeal, you need to pay, pay the impact fee first that I do not know but I suspect would you mind going to the microphone so people can hear <coughs> thanks that I, don't know. <laughs> um, I suspect she hasn't because I, I think she's hoping to, um, to get the waiver so um, I don't know I could text her actually and ask her I think Dean knows the answer to that okay. question my understanding is, is that the check was received and Great. was um, put in the drawer and is being held until the resolution Perfect. of this matter. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope. Uh, Mike? No, I'm fine. Colleen? Just for the record, we've lost Colleen temporarily. <coughs> she, she may try to call back in. Okay. okay. Um, there are no other questions. Is there a motion to conclude the hearing? Do we need to, do we hear from Lee before we conclude or after? Probably better as part of the hearing okay. for the record. Um, my recommendation to the board is that this not be considered new development, but rather reestablishing units that mm -hmm. existed previously. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an equally rational interpretation under the ordinance as suggesting that it is new development. I have a few comments. I do think they would have been. I think I do think we would have been better commenting in the general case with the hearing closed. So I'm going to ask for a motion. So moved. Mary moves. I'll um, second. Mike seconds to close the hearing. Any discussion? Hearing none. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Uh, here are my reactions. First, uh, and I fault myself uh, expressly for not having read this as, more, as closely as I should have. Uh, I've got some questions about the ordinance altogether, uh, and specifically why we're still paying 20, almost 20 years later for a, for a uh, recreation path project, which one would think by now uh, either concluded as a project or that we've already paid for. So uh, as basis for this fee, uh, it seems to me that an impact fee is a very legitimate and necessary uh, feature. Uh, it ordinarily is associated with classrooms and other hard infrastructure. Uh, I'm not as familiar with impact fees that are associated with rec paths. Uh, so I have a general comment about wondering about the ordinance altogether. Secondly, the more I read it, the more it turned out, it seemed to me, and and I, I will, uh, and this is not meant to uh, argue staff interpretation. This is just simply another interpretation. Uh, 
and uh, probably a less convincing one given my uh, uh, ignorance of, of the general matter. But it seemed to me this was, this was geared to land development and not necessarily by dwelling unit. Uh, it seemed to me that this impact fee had to do with the development of a, of a, of a piece of land which, which was intended to create dwellings. And that doesn't seem to me to, to, to represent this case. Uh, that's a personal view. Uh, again, I'm not being argumentative. I just, from my own personal case, I wonder uh, if there isn't room for us to consider a, a wide range of interpretation here uh, in terms of what's written in black and white. Any other comments? I, I had a lot of questions about the ordinance, too, but I thought we could maybe put that off to another right. time. Yeah. I think I think it'd be yep. a good idea to talk about the ordinance because I there were a lot of things I didn't understand about it, but I thought for the sake of Miss Byers, we should maybe just make a decision about this. And no, no question. But mm -hmm. I think it's important to to relieve ourselves of these of these yeah, doubts sure. yeah. and concerns. Yeah. Uh, you know, we also don't have a lot of time right. in the next several months to necessarily revisit this but yeah. it is the basis on which we're making this decision it's the document that governs the you know uh, the issue here and uh, I think it's a factor in at least my own personal you know yeah. uh, take but but together with our last meeting we haven't undermined the intent of the ordinance or done anything amiss by by granting this waiver if we grant it by if we, vote. If we were to grant the waiver by vote, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think in that case, uh, uh, granting the waiver, uh, there may be different views, uh, but... Uh, in other words, I, I just meant that granting the waiver didn't signal any position one way or other about the ordinance, in my view. No, I mean, the, the ordinance provides for a waiver right. process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, No, you're right. No, they're yeah. two different, you know... Two different two. issues, yeah. But I think it... I think it bears on the question. Sure. No. Yeah. And um, uh, again, it just seemed to me that reading it in daylight, call it, uh, that this was much more oriented to you know, to land and units built on it than it was to conversion of or or, or return of of, uh, of units to an original uh, uh, configuration from uh, one that already had paid a fee. Presumably, uh, at at an earlier time. So, She's thinking. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this may have so, right. predated the fee, but nonetheless, right? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Oh, because the <laughs> ordinance didn't take effect at the time they were. Right. All right. Yeah. So we have a wrinkle there as well. But in any case, would you like to repeat your recommendation? Sure. My recommendation is that the board grant the waiver as requested upon a finding that this doesn't actually constitute new development because it's reestablishing a prior existing dwelling unit. I'm going to, I'll make the motion uh, to that effect, that, that we grant the waiver. I'll second it. Mike moves, Mary seconds to grant the waiver. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 Mary? No, Colleen. Colleen. We <sighs> do not yet have Colleen back. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Just to be sure. Mary said yes, and we don't know what Colleen says. Uh, those who are disapproving, please say, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And Thank you. So I can give you the news? You can give her. Yes, yes. and what, yeah. we, I would ask that Lee send her a letter because we have to approve it in writing uh, within 45 days, I believe. Consistent. I will send her a letter. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you very yeah. much. And thank you, Dean, for, you, for your role, uh, which was quite professional, and uh, I'm sure there's room to sit and talk about this at some point with you, but uh, uh, please know that we greatly appreciate uh, your approach, and in this case, uh, the original decision, and this is not uh, to question the veracity of that so much as to wonder, at least it seems to me, a little bit about the intent of this ordinance at this point in time. So 
Uh, I do think it's I do think it's timely to suggest uh, to you that when it's convenient, we'll add it to the list. Yeah, we can. <laughs> When we do the uh, the next one year plan, <laughs> All right, we, yeah. you won't be surprised to see this on it. So, okay, understood. Thank you, thank you, everybody. The next item is to receive zoning proposals from the planning commission, and with a, with an action to warn a public hearing. And Dean is going to present uh, the group of these. Um, yes, very briefly, as soon as I get my... I'm going to get some water, I'll be right back. And is Colleen back, so are we on hiatus? Colleen is not back. I think we are okay. on hiatus. I think we'll go ahead, though. Mary's just gone to get some water. Whoops. Sorry. Well, then, um, just to uh, work from this one <laughs> slide, the Planning Commission uh, has conducted a public hearing. It held that on November 14th. And as a result of that hearing, they took a vote to advance two proposals to change the zoning regulations. Uh, they voted to advance them to the Select Board for its consideration. Those were shipped off to you some time ago. Um, the process when this happens is for the select board to formally receive the proposal and to set a date for a public hearing it doesn't it's not required to do those two things uh, at the same time but it's generally the procedure so that is what tonight is about it's about starting a clock that begins when the proposal is formally received um, and then, as a practical matter, if you wish to consider it, then you need to warn a public hearing to do that. Um, as I understand, we delivered copies of the documents to, to the manager's office, and I'm uh, expecting that those who wanted to receive it before tonight did get your copies. It's pretty voluminous. Um, there are two parts, one having to do with the form-based zoning proposal, which we briefed you on a couple of months ago. Jason Graydon and I uh, did that. And then the second one um, would simplify the process for projects that are going through the Historic Preservation and Review Commission. Review. Happy to answer any questions. Were any other proposals discussed, or were these just the two? At that particular hearing, those were the two. I can tell you that there is what I would call a companion uh, amendment uh, that would be changing the subdivision regulations that, in a perfect world, would have also been included, um, but was not. Um, and that would correct some references that are included in the subdivision regs so that they would be correct in the event that the form based zoning is adopted. The Planning Commission has warned that hearing for early January, if I'm recalling, and then almost certainly will move at least part of it on to you. So if the decision is made to delay the hearing date until late January or early February, um, that's not a bad thing if you're thinking that, well, if it relates to the form-based zoning, you can deal with it all in the same time. That yeah, would the, the subdivision amendments relate to this particular proposal or the, the form-based zoning The overall? subdivision amendments that are coming down the pike have to do with the fact that there's a, a reference in the subdivision regulations to the form-based zoning where they are now. But if you approve the form-based zoning change, they'll be in a different place. And so the references will be wrong. So we'll be fixing that. But then also, that's the core of that amendment. Um, this is picking up on some of the conversation as of late having to do with economic development and simplifying the review process. This, the part of the subdivision amendment that's less certain would remove from review 
uh, some aspects of the subdivision regs when a project goes through form-based zoning. So in short, it will simplify the development review process in the town of Shelburne for projects going through form-based zoning. That already happens to some degree. It would happen to a greater degree if the Planning Commission, after this public hearing, decides to move it to the Select Board. Gene, uh, Lee has suggested that possibly February 11th would be a target date. Does that allow for us to consider this, this, the second of these? I believe it you would. Think? If, if things unfold the way I suspect they would unfold, I think it would. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, I have a comment. I just want to observe that I think the Planning Commission does really difficult work and I appreciate that they're staying on top of things. I know that the uh, form-based zoning that was done probably three years ago now, maybe two. The was first it, version 2016. Yeah, uh, was a really big project. It was well received, um, at least by the DRB uh, when it came out. Uh, a lot of work was done. We've had, I know that DRB had at least one proposal not long after that for uh, FBZ. Uh, um, yeah, the, the Clint West project, which is under construction, is the first form-based yeah. zoning project, and, and there is another substantial form-based zoning project recently approved. And it was clear to all of us that it would probably need to be tweaked here and there, and so I appreciate that the Commission with Dean's help has done that. So I would move to formally receive these two proposals uh, and uh, set a date for public hearing on them for February 11. Mary moves. I'll second that. Mike seconds. Any further discussion? Colleen, is Colleen? No. She has not called back okay. to her. Touch base. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Colleen not voting. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dean. The next item is to determine interest in or authorize grant applications cost sharing agreements for a certified local government project, a hazard mitigation plan up and a hazard in mitigation plan update and working communities challenge program. And again, Dean is going to take us through these. So as has been uh, mentioned in your packet, um, this pertains to a CLG, which is the abbreviation for Certified Local Government, uh, an application that is submitted by the town uh, to the State of Vermont Division of Historic Preservation on a regular basis, typically every two to three years. They receive funding from the, the National Park Service that flows through the state to the CLGs in Vermont, which I think there are about a 10 or a dozen. Um, the project that this application pertains to was uh, envisioned in the budget that was approved by the voters. Um, the match for this, for this application was included. The project specifically would update a document known as the Historic Structures and Sites Survey which was done in the uh, early 90s or late 80s, I believe, and last updated in 2001. The deadline for this application is the middle of December, the 16th specifically. Um, there, I believe, is at least in Lee's packet, maybe in all of your packets, there was a copy of the signature letter, signature page, which I would add my name to and the chair of, this, of the HPDRC would add his to. Um, there's also a budget that also uh, has a place for the signature of the chair as well. I would, uh, if there's no questions, I would just move uh, this forward. Uh, so move approval of the uh, certified local government grant application that's already been budgeted. That's presented. Yes. Mike, a second? I'll second that. Mike seconds. Do you have any? Any comment? No, just at the end of the meeting, we'll get your signature on all these various okay. documents. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Also in your packets was material relating to the update of a document called the All Hazards Mitigation Plan. I'm a little bit out of my depth here. This is something that Bob Blake, I believe, has been the, the key person on. 
It's a document that the feds require municipalities to have if they're going to be eligible for certain funds. Shelburne was part of a group effort that was coordinated by the Regional Planning Commission. Um, that resulted in a plan that will expire in March of 2020, 20, uh, 2022. There's something about the rules uh, in effect that prevent the Regional Planning Commission from doing that again. So the state is coordinating it right now. And they have provided the opportunity for towns to basically um, get on board with a group effort. But to do that, they would like the towns or need the towns to do this match commitment letter. And so that's been involved in, or included in your packets. And if the board um, is so inclined, we would ask that you would authorize the chair to sign that so that it can be submitted. I, can I, I know you said this isn't really in your wheelhouse, but what, what is an all hazards <laughs> mitigation plan? An all hazards mitigation plan, and, and Lee can chime in because he was involved in it as well, it is a document that looks at um, a range of hazards that a community is exposed to, everything from natural uh, disasters, environmental events, to um, electrical failures, storms, and things like that. And it's a document that has a series of sections and, and maps and data and analysis that provides a, an action plan for what we would do in the event of those situations. Yeah, so I've, got it on, I've got it on my computer. If you'd like to see what it looks like, I can email <laughs> each of you a copy. It's on the town's website. I good. just wondered what fell under all hazards. Yeah. It's good, good bedtime reading. <laughs> now, the process in creating these is intended to analyze risk, vulnerability, and consequence. So looking at, as Dean mentioned, the whole array from windstorms to floods to technological failures and what are the like most likely risks what are the greatest vulnerabilities <coughs> and then picking several of those and creating a plan to try to address those and thus the mitigation to try to lessen the, the risk factors involved so for example in communities that have known great risks of flooding are there things they should be doing in advance before the next one happens to try to lessen that probability or that risk and some FEMA assistance is conditioned on it, right? Yes. It's one of those factors that yeah. relates to potential reimbursement, whether for mitigation projects beforehand or disaster assistance afterward. It's, it's quite an unusually complicated process for what ought to be something simpler. But nonetheless, I mean, I would certainly recommend we consider sure. yeah. signing on to this. If the state covers it all, great. If not, it's 25 cents Who on the dollar. Who, who prepares the plan, though? Who's, who's, to whom would, who's going to receive the $10,000 to do this plan? So the state, in part, as part of its coordination efforts, would go through a process. Um, if we choose to remain with other communities in a group, they would coordinate a process of, um, uh, Lee had mentioned a request for qualifications earlier in connection with the project. They would go through a selection process that involved either a request like for an qualifications or, or an environmental. Effort. Oh, what types of firms? Yeah. Um, well, the Regional Planning Commission itself was the we, consultant. We, yeah. we wrote the last one for the county and each of I the see. towns. I Okay, yeah. yeah, I just didn't know what the mechanics right. were for who's going to do the study and... It's become a whole business enterprise unto itself. I would imagine. Yeah. Because everybody's going through these nationwide. Well, well, yeah, well, we should be we should be uh, uh, thankful for the fact that uh, uh, there's such an interest in slimming government because they could have called this any and all. <laughs> any and all. <laughs> we could have had double A, yeah. H M, or whatever. Any discussion? Any further discussion? No, I would move to approve um, uh, applying for the all hazards mitigation plan so that we can uh, receive the FEMA assistance and I would move that the town uh, have allow that we might end up having to pay 25% of the cost as much as $2,500. Mary moves. I uh, second. Mike seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those approving please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. The final item that's part of my uh, bailiwick here tonight has to do with something called the Working Communities Challenge Program. 
This was, uh, this was something that came to our attention as a result of an announcement a couple of months ago from, of all places, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, um, which has um, uh, developed this program in cooperation with the New England states. It was uh, an announcement that was circulated back at the end of September. At the time, the reaction was, wow, this looks kind of interesting, but we recognized it has an emphasis on addressing um, in particular, low-income populations, which as um, some of us with um, experience in Shelburne know that when it comes to grants, we don't always fare particularly well in Shelburne given things like median household income. However, that's not to say that there aren't low-income populations within the town of Shelburne, and some of the obvious examples of those um, across Vermont and across the nation include residents of mobile home parks. So I um, had a meeting with my colleague in Heinsberg, and before long we came to the conclusion that the mobile home populations in our respective community, communities um, might serve as a core for this idea, uh, for this grant. And I should step back for just a moment and say this grant has some quirky requirements that combine having a community that's on a list, and we're not on that list, uh, and having a certain population. And so um, we have the population. So Heinsberg's on the list, but they're too small. So if they teamed up with Shelburne, we would have enough population and we would have the, this listing. So there's this, there's this additional complication that this program has, uh, but in a sense it kind of forces collaboration. So that's why I reached out to Heinsberg specifically. After that meeting, the word kind of went out and um, entities such as the Regional Planning Commission, CVOEO, and numerous others became aware of it. Now, at this point, I want to turn and, and address Jess Hyman, who works for CVOEO, who is the director of the Fair Housing Program in that organization, um, who has done a lot of work developing material for this program. So, um, hi, Jess. <laughs> and. What has resulted is that CVOEO submitted as an applicant a letter of interest. Um, it identified potential partners. There's no obligation in the part, on their part when the letter of interest on the part of any of the partners. However, the hope would be that the select board would find this of interest enough so that Shelburne could be a core partner in this endeavor that would be led by CVOEO. What is the product that comes from the grant application? It's a planning grant, it's assistance to the communities that receive it. The, the kicker really is that earning a planning grant on the neighborhood of $10,000 could lead to an implementation grant on the order of $300,000. Jess, would you like to add anything? And if so, use the mic. Sure, yeah, thank, thank you so much for the opportunity to say something. Um, so this planning grant, and it, it would be focusing on the towns of Hinesburg, Shelburne, and St. George as well. Um, and the the Fed the the Fed's goal for the Working Communities Challenge Program is to have some systemic change that will uh, Im improve the lives of everyone in in each of the communities, specifically people with lower incomes. And so with with this project focusing primarily on mobile home communities, we would want to look at barriers to civic engagement and co community cohesion. So it would be looking at um, the needs within the mobile home communities, um, increasing civic engagement among mobile home residents in the greater town, and increasing community engagement um, overall. So not just within the mobile home communities, but with the, between the mobile home community residents and the broader communities as a whole. So there's a great potential to um, really bring a lot of, um, a lot of more voices into the conversations and uh, help fill some gaps within our communities, especially with the lowest income residents. Just one um, final comment, and that is that um, as this was developing, I did reach out to the chairs of the co-op boards of both Shelburnewood and Lakeview. Um, they weren't in a position to make any kind of commitments, but their reactions were favorable. Just as a comment, and I appreciate you coming this evening, I have to say I'm very proud of the two mobile home communities that we have in Shelburne. They're both, they're both co-ops. 
They're both very active. Um, and I don't see, and we get to see them a lot, not all of the residents, but their representatives. And um, I'm certainly not opposed to doing whatever is appropriate to increase engagement among all of our Shelburne residents um, and those who are um, struggling economically or economically disadvantaged. I would say there's also, is this program limited to mobile home communities? No. Because there's other areas of Shelburne, I'm sure that could benefit as well. And may I add something? And that's yeah. the beauty of it being a planning grant, because with the planning grant, we can propose a basic scope of the project. And through the planning process, that's when we figure out, well, what are the, really, what are the real needs in each community? So it's not just finding out where the gaps are, but also how each of the communities can learn from the others. So looking at what's working really well here might be able to be applied in Hinesburg and St. George. What's working well in St. George could be applied here in, in Hinesburg. So I think there's some there's a good opportunity for the project to evolve through the planning process um, to develop the, the full proposal. I do want to mention there is a third mobile home park in the town right. of Shelburne, so we don't want to, we right. just won't want to act is like there the are two. Is that the one on? Um, off, off of off Spears. Spears. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Three, yeah. I think this is a great idea, uh, beginning with the fact that I, I would really value the, uh, our uh, interaction with the CAP uh, which, uh, through no one's fault, uh, surely is not something that's been routine for us. And I would really look forward to that. Uh, I think it deals positively with the fact that we have embedded in, in uh, ineligible communities, uh, s smaller communities that are quite eligible, and at least it, re it makes a reach to them uh, in a program that otherwise might not, uh, might not. Uh, as I remember, the, the uh, Fed Reserve of Boston was one of the first of the Fed Reserves to step up during a period of time, maybe 12, 15 years ago, when community banking was a great priority. And uh, they were setting uh, expectations for the, for the major banks. And I think the Fed Reserve of Boston didn't it walk the walk and has continued, so uh, uh, this all seems like something that really should happen, and I would certainly uh, favor uh, 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 not only supporting it, but uh, giving you the sense that whatever else we could do to help, uh, we'd be certainly pleased to do so. So, comments, Lee? No, I think it's certainly worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. I would move that we endorse uh, this project, and I'd be very p proud to be a c core partner in this project. So that would be my motion. Thank you, Mary. I'll second that. Mike seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you thank for you coming, all. and thank you for bringing it to our attention, Dean. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none. The next item is, a, is the commercial <coughs> cannabis resolution proposed by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move this off to our next meeting when we have more members of the select board here so that they could also understand and weigh in on, on this. Is that inappropriate? No, I think that's a good idea because uh, we now lack two. And I don't believe there's any time time urgency to this, is there? There is in the sense that in January when the le legislature yes. comes well, back. Well, in January, in, yeah. but we could, right. we could do this December 3rd, correct? It's 3rd or 10. Yes. Thank you, Dean. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, I think that's probably a yeah, good I, idea. I do you agree, that's a good, Yeah, I do. In I which case, we'll, we'll just simply move we'll on. Just, oh. <coughs> we can, Thank we you. don't need any motion to... We can, I think we can agree to table it. Okay. Yeah. Move on. Right. If that's... Uh, the next item then is to uh, get an update from Lee on the economic development officer. So just wanted to give you a quick update on, on current events in that arena, which has clearly risen to high priority with the board and the community. Um, I've had a number of conversations with local businesses. I have met or spoken with two economic development staffers in two different towns. Um, 
of course, per participated in the SBPA meetings that we've all had recently. Um, looking into the Bristol Bucks program, which was an idea I had mentioned, it's not my idea, but where other communities have sort of a, a collective gift certificate that's good at any number of participating businesses within a community. Bristol has an active program they call Bristol Bucks. I'll be talking with their, the person who spearheads that tomorrow just to learn more about who manages it, how it evolved, and who, you know, who makes it happen. There has to be a central bank, if you will, for the money and the accounting of it, but I think it would probably be a fairly simple thing to do if the local businesses were interested in, in participating. Also had a good conversation with a commercial realtor who works in Shelburne, among other Chittenden County municipalities. And so I'm just reaching out, trying to do a lot of outreach and learn what I can from those in the business. Um, the key, key takeaway so far, the advice offered was, you know, it might be a great idea to have a staff person, but think f before leaping. Think about what it is we really hope to achieve, how best we might achieve that, whether it's restructuring a new person, how they would interact with other town departments and with the community, and, and what we would have as expectations. You know, we can't think we're going to hire somebody and they're going to have 10 new businesses in town next year. But continuing to help advance that initiative. Lee, have, um, have you encountered anybody from a comparable size town that has a dedicated staff person? Well, Colchester does, but of course they're a larger municipality. Uh, Waterbury has an interesting case where the person is funded by the town, <coughs> but they work for a separate nonprofit that collaborates with the town. And I think that was partly a political dynamic as much as a operational one. Hmm. Uh, so still doing the research and reaching out to others as I can make time for that. But I, I just want you to know that I'm great. doing yeah. my best to move that forward. That's great. I remember th something like the Bristol Bucks in Shelburne. Uh, when I first moved here in 2008 or 9, it was sort of like a Shelburne. Does anyone recall this? It was like a Shelburne, and it was a day where you could redeem or use those funds to purchase something in Shelburne? Hmm. Anyone remembers this? Hmm. Oh, Some well. communities do it literally. You pay money at, say, a chamber of commerce, and right. it's good anywhere. I've seen in other communities where it's more of a barter system. So if I'm a massage therapist, I'll put out a list of the types of services I would consider equivalent to an hour of massage, and it's bartered through service rather than cash. But, you know, if it's something the business community would like to see... Um, We'll figure that out. Hmm. And we have, well, we've submitted the application to join SBPA, so keeping things moving. Good. Thank you. Comments, Mayor? <coughs> Any comments from the public? Oh, thank you. No. The next item is, is really kind of a follow-on to that, and uh, has, <coughs> in, to some extent, uh, it, it, it was generated by some of the same discussion that Lee is referring to that we had uh, uh, last week with uh, the Business and Professional Association. No, uh, our commitment, thanks to the to the work of uh, Jamie and Mike, uh, uh, Mary as well, uh, was a uh, was an integral part of that uh, forum. You know, we've raised interest of that we're uh, making every effort to address on a routine basis. And one of the things that, uh, uh, oh, I should say, shop local, please, this week. Mm -hmm. That's the message that we're conveying. Uh, but uh, one of the commitments that I thought we should make is to each meeting address something, to talk about some aspect of local economic development uh, to try to uh, 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 strengthen uh, our participation to reduce, as I called it that night, a gap in expectations between us and the Business and Professional Association. And that uh, led to some considerations of, uh, of local preference. So uh, it's not only shop local, it's buy local. 
and uh, Lee has provided us a copy of the town purchasing policy, which does address uh, uh, in, in, in not uh, con conclusive terms, but does address uh, preferences in terms of category. Uh, uh, we have a great deal to do in the next weeks and months. But uh, one of the interests that I thought I'd introduce to, to all of us is the idea of whether we actually know who the local businesses are small, that are small, minority, uh, uh, women-owned, uh, uh, and, and such. Uh, I'm not sure that we have a register of those. Uh, I think if we did an audit of what was purchased from businesses of that kind, uh, we might discover further opportunities in our purchasing of goods and services, which is substantial, as we'll see in budget. But I don't think we should be taking that step as much as we should in the presentation of departmental budgets, just just re recommit to, uh, to our uh, uh, concern to buy local whenever possible. Uh, there are understandable concerns always raised about any kind of local preference in terms of whether the goods are the same and the services are as adequate uh, and such, but uh, I don't think you can ever leave a stone unturned, and I would be pleased when we have the departmental budget reviews uh, that, we will, uh, that we can ask and we'll get uh, uh, some, some uh, factual answers on what efforts have been made uh, how often do we make local businesses aware of opportunities coming? Uh, do we indeed have a, a, a registry of sorts uh, of, uh, of businesses and persons in the case of uh, con consultation uh, who offer the kinds of, uh, of assistance that we're looking for? So uh, it was just to kind of get it up on the table and seek some of your ideas as well about what what yeah. might we do uh, to encourage the town as, as I as I said the town is a business in this town so what could we do to uh, 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 to improve likely our own behavior in terms of buying local well now we're kind of moving on to the next item from are we and are we on local I we're thought we were still on. Policy. We are, okay. Yeah. We moved on. I'm sorry. Local I was preference. still on 11. No. Um, <laughs> having just reviewed a bunch of bills, I can say that we do buy as local as we can. I would say we stay pretty much in Chittenden County. I don't know that we buy in Shelburne as much as we can. I do notice that staff go to Lowe's a lot when they could go to the Obershawn here. Or Ray's. Right. Um, but... Uh, <coughs> not realizing that we had moved on to number 12 for economic development one idea that might get some traction and might be helpful is to and and Jerry you started this about a year ago when we met with uh, uh, Tom Dannenberg and uh, from the museum just to reach out uh, to our partners perhaps we can invite um, at least new business folks to come to a meeting just to make a presentation now and then. I know that where Chef Contos was, there's a new business. I haven't been in. I can't really figure out what it is. But I know that there's a business there. And there's the skin, bee, bee, bee skin. Bee skin. The Belgian, you know. Yeah. Uh, I would love to hear from that owner to see what they do and why they're in Shelburne. And maybe bringing them here um, would be a helpful way um, I know people do, believe it or not, watch the select board meetings, and so it'd be a nice way to learn more and just create a... Can, you had asked, Jerry, that um, we keep economic development on our agenda on a weekly basis so that we can just keep the ball rolling, which I think is a great idea, but we might add more substance to it by inviting folks to come and talk to us just at the beginning of public comment. Hi, I'm so-and-so, and, you know. Yeah, along those lines, I have actually visited that new shop twice, once when they were still setting up, and then another time just to check in and say hi and invite yeah. them to the SBPA. And the other piece of it that I've also tried to keep in mind are the, is the nonprofit sector, which is a huge part of our local economy. Mm -hmm. Certainly with the board, 
We've made, I think, very good efforts rebuilding relationships over the past year with the museum and the farms. There's um, no reason why we couldn't have select board meetings at the museum. They have that a big room yep. that we could do that. We could also do one at the end or the coach barn anyway. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> or, you know, that's sure. possible. You and know, meeting elsewhere. We, we, um, Josh used to talk about moving our meetings, um, and this might be a uh, good way to do Opportunity. that. Opportunity. Yeah. I've also reached out to the craft school and the Vermont Day School that just had Perfect, a groundbreaking yeah. and participated in that and with them, just too. to welcome them. Welcome them. So, yep. trying to keep that piece Are of our economy. Are they building a bigger school, the Day School? Yes, they're doing a significant expansion. Addition. Great. Yeah, you know, I think. I mean, my uh, I came away from that meeting the other night thinking, uh, we've we. We're perceived as an authority that uh, is is by our activities allowing or not allowing. I mean, we're perceived pretty much in in, in regulatory terms. Select board now, and uh, and and a, and a short step from there, the town. And there was a there was a good. I mean, the perception it seemed to me was not so much what what was the town doing, but. Uh, where, what could it do to, you know, in its own business, in its own, in its own world, what could it do to uh, help promote and market local business? We talked about the article in Washington Post. Mm -hmm. Should we make 150 copies as select board, town, and distribute them, presuming the Washington Post doesn't have quite that readership in Shelburne. I don't mean to disparage them, but <laughs> let's assume that it would have been handy to hand out. I mean, here's a, you know, here's, here's material that deserves to be more widely read. Is that an appropriate role for the select board? I mean, are, are, can we see ourselves in a promotional marketing uh, 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 stance? Uh, and if not, is that more appropriate to the business and professional association with whom we should sit down and talk about dividing that kind of labor. And, and through all of that thinking about it, it struck me that we're a business like the rest of the businesses in town. We take in and we, and we spend, and, uh, and as we go, so do some of the businesses in town go and vice versa. And, uh, and we are institutional in, in the, quite the same way as the museum and the farms. And then if we behave that way, rather than as court and, and regulator and, and, you know, decision maker of, of appeals and blah, 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 uh, if we, if we con ourselves were willing to take on uh, a different uh, identity and, uh, and, an, and, and present an attitude that's more like what we really feel, uh, then uh, I think a lot of things are going to be possible. So all of this kind of came up as a uh, 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 as, as a question of uh, of uh, you know how, how what best can we do meeting by meeting, given what now especially is a pretty limited uh, capacity in these next few months. And these are I think are some great ideas and having a business corner to every meeting in effect in some form. Uh, a new business comes, I suggested maybe we invite uh, the, the uh, body shops. There are several, and it probably is the third that I don't know, just to come one night and tell us a little bit about the auto body business. I mean, those are two very healthy, it would seem to me, and successful businesses in town. Is there a third or fourth? Oh, and no. the soon. Um, Susan McClellan, Falls Road. As a small business owner myself, I would be interested in some of these new businesses, how their process was through going through planning and zoning and their signage and that type of thing. Um, when I went into business, I went in as a, uh, as a home occupancy. And at that time, back in 87, everything was very cut and dried. You either complied with what was needed or not. What I had problems with excuse me, <clears throat> was um, my signage. A lot of problems with the signage. 
um, especially replacing it when it needed replacing. Three meetings we had to go to. It was really a crazy process. So I, I would be interested in, in that aspect too. I mean, it's great to get businesses in here, but we've got to make, you know, you want them to comply to certain rules and regulations, but we have to make it a little smooth for them to get into business also. Thanks. Thank you, Susan. Well, I'll, you know, I'll just chime in with the economic development piece <coughs> position because when we had envisioned that part of some of these issues, you know, outreach, facilitation, guiding people through the process, but also doing some of the sort of promotion, you know, I mean, I don't know if it, I mean, you hate to say, Lee, can you work on this next, you know? Yeah. So who's going to, you know, and, and these are great ideas. Jamie and I talked about just, you know, each of us like every month saying, I'm going to go talk to this business, you know? Yeah. And, you know, those yeah. are great ideas. Will we do it? You know, will we, I mean, you know, my time is very limited and these are great ideas, but are we going to, are we going to consistently and, and, you know, sincerely follow through with them? So I think we have to have a real thought about what's practicable. And also, you know, that our role is facilitation. I don't know if it's, leader and I mean I, I mean, we want to be leader but are we are we the lead person no, it's a good question. for this for these yeah. kinds of efforts no it's um, a good question and and the conversation was in the context of the overarching three point program that you and Jamie mm -hmm. developed that Mary helped with so it wasn't it it it, it, was, the it was sort of inside the three points there are some specific particular things yeah, yeah. and uh, these don't measure to the magnitude of those three things which we're going to discuss in informal terms but uh, but the idea came the was you know what about Washington Post who should be doing that it's right. a good yeah. idea yeah so one of the things we've done is is uh, asked the association to sit down with the association yep. And say, as as a fellow member, mm -hmm. and a, as a business in town, here's what we think we can bring to the table. Uh, one, one thing I am know. sensitive to f from having these conversations is a sort of credibility issue. Yeah. And I don't want to perpetuate this perception that, you know, we talk a lot, I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm new to the board, but that the board talks a lot. Yeah. But where's the, you know, when the boots hit the pavement? Where, yeah. where's the actual work so no exactly so let's you yeah. know i'd like to identify like two or three concrete things yeah. and then deliver yeah you know, and i noticed sure that that's that they had a list posted <coughs> on the on the door and i mean i was astonished at some of the detail and you can't you you know you go home and you're thinking there has to be a way that we can address two or three of these things yeah. again now in an incremental way. I don't mean. It, 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 I don't remember seeing such a list. Have and, we seen? Well, we're gonna it's we're a, gonna yeah, make. Roz emailed it. Yeah, we're gonna. We, Roz emailed it uh, to I you. I never saw it. Uh, so. I thought she did. You, I'll take a look. I may have been on that. That was a yeah. list generated from the big event they held at the museum. Right. Yeah. Is that the same list so that you're talking ago. about? Okay. Yeah. Um, no, no, it was a, a long list of of ideas coming out of three sessions, three different sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, I, I, this really is meant tonight just to kind of share thoughts, yeah. Uh, yeah. which this is an opportunity for us to do. So uh, you, Are we on 11 yeah. or 12? <laughs> well, we moved yes. to uh, <laughs> yes. 12, yes. but yes. I was introducing, I was commenting about 12 <laughs> as one aspect yeah. of a general approach. Yeah. Can and I just the say... Idea uh, is to, is to is to kind of just just introduce what do we have what thoughts do we have about local preference what could we do no uh, what perf i mean performance is always more important than policy and when we come to the departmental reviews we can ask various departments how they approach it what yeah. you know what have they found works and what doesn't and we then went on uh, in in maybe a atypical fashion to talk about uh, economic development, you know, you know, writ large, but focusing on these very individual items, some of which we might be able to pick up as we go along, and then generally uh, uh, how to anticipate. Uh, 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 maybe uh, you know some. I think some basic changes in role. Frankly, uh, can I? Um, uh, I wanted to make just a recommendation about the purchasing policy 
that we asked the uh, ethics committee to take a look. I mean, there's a way you could read um, the CBC, the language that applies to CBCs is creating potential appearance of conflict of interest if, the, if somebody on a CBC is, is also on a local business or in a position to maybe offer services to the town. I don't, I don't know what the, what the regulations are that govern employees and, and whether there's language about creating appearance of conflict of interest or if that's a concern. If, a, if an employee is also providing a service to the town or being paid to, to perform some function. But I thought, you know, at least clarifying that would at least help maybe prevent some problems down the road. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly something that could be looked at. The practical reality is there's not a whole lot of, for the types of services and goods the town provides, again, we do our best, but there's not a whole lot of sources in, in town. In local, yeah, employees, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's, as you well know, it's a dynamic balance. You don't want to punish somebody by saying they can't sell to the town because they're related right. in some way. At the same time, sure, if we were always going to one person and we were paying more for a service than some comparable elsewhere, we'd have to be cautious about that. Right. Well, the shorthand of this right. was, we're our own best example. So if we're asking and, and encouraging uh, all of us to shop local and buy local, are we doing it ourselves? Right, yeah. And I'm not sure we know. Uh, in any detail. I'm not sure we have the time to, as I said, to do any kind of audit or any kind of systematic study, well, like but it's a question, no, but it's a question we can ask various departments uh, to just clue us in about what your experience yeah. has been. I mean, like Mary, yeah. when I was signing the, what is the receipts? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was struck by, there's, there's a fair amount, and it's not insignificant amount of local. Yeah. Which yeah. is great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I was happy to see that. Yeah. And we may be maxing it out, in which case we should, you know, we should make folks aware of that. So in the meantime, I think we can still be cheerleaders for our own Absolutely. community. Yes. I don't think we need to be afraid to toot yeah. our own horn and visit people and do what we can. I mean, no, absolutely. As I yeah. mentioned at that meeting last week, when I've gone out to meet with, with businesses, often the response I get is, it's the first time anyone from the town ever visited with us that wasn't looking for money or had a problem to solve or a something. Just just came to say, hi, how's it going? Yeah. And I don't say that out of any ego. It's just, I think I'm willing to do that. I think others need to do that. When people come to see yeah. us, a lot of it as much is about attitude and approach is what the answer might be. Is there a way to get to yes rather than it's a yes or no box? Yeah. And I mean, some of this discussion might may be repeated in terms of, of talking about the economic development function for sure, but uh, uh, it, it just seemed to me that 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 we should uh, we should be doing something substantive rather than as, as you say just talking about it. Hmm. And uh, yep. so th that was the whole idea behind it. So, comments? No. Any other? Comments, hearing none. Next item is update on volunteer appreciation. Uh, just wanted, again, that was a big, seemed like a high priority for the board. Ron was here at the last meeting and gave great encouragement to us to continue trying to promote opportunities for volunteerism, celebrate volunteerism, appreciate volunteerism. Uh, we all know we have quite an array of committees and boards and commissions that all perform important functions and we ought to do what we can to help strengthen that and make people feel like their time is worthwhile. Um, whether And there's all sorts of ways we can try to promote that. We could, we talked about maybe a, an appreciation night. Mm -hmm. We can strengthen our outreach to vari through various media as w when opportunities arise. Um, you know, I'd be willing to try to work with the school to strengthen a mentoring sort of program for the student board members. So that can be a, a meaningful learning experience and not just kind of throwing them to their committees and who's looking out for them and helping them learn what their roles might be and, and how that fits into the bigger picture of civic affairs. I would like to recommend a volunteer appreciation night at town meeting. It seems to me that's the perfect time. It wouldn't be a lot, a lot of added extra work because we're already there anyway we're already having dinner anyway 
and to invite all of the volunteers on the various CBCs to come and have dinner. Um, you could even have a DRB table and a planning commission table if you wanted to. And um, when uh, at last year's dinner, we had our representatives come from table to table to talk about issues. That was, I thought, fairly nicely done. Um, and then we can, um, Jerry, you could recognize or the town manager could recognize up at the podium all of the people and say, can the DRB stand and that kind of thing. I think sure. that would um, be a very cost-effective method of, um, you know, at least once a year really um, commending those people who do volunteer, unlike us who get paid. <laughs> I think that's a great idea and a very efficient way to do yeah. it as well. Yeah, I think that's a great idea too. I mean, yes. I, I, I think that's a super idea and I, I would certainly encourage we just simply plan on it. I think, yeah, can, I think can I ask, brilliant. maybe we could ask the, board, the chairs what they think would be the most yeah. appropriate or what for would that, they like to see? that like, evening. What, yeah, or, 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 yeah, or what would they like, yeah. what do they think would be? Yeah. The best Cash. way to, to we <laughs> could have a portion of the program dedicated to volunteers, mm -hmm. and between now and and several months from now, we could work up some uh, you know expect definition of that and yeah. expectation. Yeah, I thought uh, along the way, Jamie made a suggestion that we would uh, at the time the CBCs made their reports, we would. Ask we would uh, ask for some survey material. You had a great idea about uh, asking folks why were they serving, and that seemed to be uh, a, 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 a really a, 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 an effective uh, uh, aspect. I mean, that would seem to make a lot of sense. At the time they do the report, that we include some responses. Uh, we have a Hague Award, which is uh, largely uh, oriented to volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we could build that in uh, as well uh, in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, we might recognize uh, uh, so often the report is available, but there's no body there in a sense. So we might recognize uh, uh, even various chairs of various committees and uh, who might wish to speak. I mean, uh, you, you'll recall, I use the phrase, we celebrate ourselves at town meeting. That's what it's all about. And there's nothing more celebratory than the number of, of, of our fellow residents who volunteer. Uh, that's, just, that's what makes us what we are. So I would really encourage, for your planning purposes... Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea uh, that we adopt that. And uh, and build a program within the formal program. We'd mm -hmm. have to probably, uh, by some kind of motion, we would have to d depart the the uh, warrant. And uh, but I don't know. We can work that out. Or I'm we sure. include it in the warrant. Yeah, we. So we it's could. a formal part of the meeting That's agenda. True. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we agree. Let's sure. pursue and let's go on that basis. Great. Yeah. And. Uh, no, I think that's a that's a great idea. Uh, so, uh, I've been reading Mr. Atkinson's uh, first book in the in a promised trilogy on the American Revolution. Some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, uh, it's yay like so. Uh, but one of the things that strikes you through the history of this country is is the degree to which volunteers made it. I mean. Uh, uh, you, know, you, you know, we all learned in, gr in grade school. Some of us were also taught it in, in high school. Not today, I don't think they do, but uh, it was always a bunch of ragamuffins, you know, against sharply dressed British troops and uh, bad, bad, bad news hessians with tall hats. And, uh, but uh, it's a remarkable history when you think back about the degree to which people up and left farms and, and small businesses and joined in. A revolution for no other purpose other than uh, 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 the ideals that it represented. So, volunteering is nothing new to any of us. But it, it, uh, I think this would be a, a, a really positive step, and an, and a recruitment tool. Yes. So, to the degree to which having tables, if we if we enlisted the chairs, 
on the idea that not only we want to recognize you and yours, but here's an opportunity to interest people in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So maybe they could have a little handout or something like, here's our mission, here's what we do, here's how often we meet, uh, you know, if you have an interest, blah, 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 so we could make it a recruiting event at the same time. So, Okay? Does that give you? Sure. Good direction. Plenty to work with. Yeah. Comments? Um, I have a comment. Uh, I just noticed that today um, Peter Welch was up in St. Albans and uh, posted on social media how great it was to visit small businesses uh, in St. Albans. We might be able to get a little bit of traction by getting one of either him or probably we couldn't get Bernie here, but um, I bet you we could get um, Peter Welch to come and Oh, that would be super. Tend, tend something like that and yeah. help get some excitement. Yeah. But we can deal with that later, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if we, uh, uh, we're not playing to the audience. We're not trying to be uh, more than we actually are. And I think that I, I hope this recognition that we're uh, a little puzzled on exactly what we can do as a select board and as a town to some degree. But we're sorting through it. Mm -hmm. uh, and while we have this super three-prong program as a, as a reference, uh, and while we're going to consider a lot of this in budget, uh, I think it's worth just, just, just uh, you know, exchanging some ideas in an informal uh, part of the meeting like this okay. about where, to, uh, you know, what can we do uh, to walk the walk here. So, uh, Sorry, I noticed yeah. that, that my comment was geared at two agenda items back. Well, that's I'm right. sorry, I'm just, We're I'm not. really tired. It's okay. We're not. <laughs> we'll be forgiven, I'm sure, by... It's been a okay. long week already, and it's yeah. only right, so Tuesday. We're on, the, we're on the path to... Uh, Indeed we are. Yeah, to town meeting. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Any, any comments? Hearing none. The next item is to update uh, the fire rescue property project. Mike's already spoken in, in part to it, but do you want to... Yeah, I realize I really spoke to it in my initial comments, and I don't have anything else to add other than the process is moving forward. And as Mike noted, um, Bob Bouchard's been very responsive and very um, cautious with expenses. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. super. Are we going to be uh, uh, intelligent at, at budget, you think? I'm not In the next sure. several months, about I can least. never guarantee when I'm going to be intelligent, yep. <laughs> Jerry. I, what do you mean? Do you do you mean will we have all the information we need? I to mean meet? enough that we can make some you know some reasonable I think estimates so. about. Uh, I, but I think he, there he's sensitive to that issue. So yeah, you yes. know I think we'll be in as yeah. good a position we can hope to be. Because the the further news, as you as you know, that we're developing about budget is beginning to suggest that uh, we wouldn't. We, we might not be interested in looking at anything but a flat budget at this point. Yeah. And uh, uh, which is probably not bad advice for. Understood. With the departments. Uh, uh, but, but we're going to make the most intelligent guess we can yeah. at, that, at the time about what the uh, prospective cost might be in the same fiscal year. So. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, we have uh, a number of wastewater allocation requests. We do, thank you. Do, just as a clear, do I need to recuse from this or anything since? I don't, no. because okay. I don't it's bringing so. that up. So we have actually four requests this evening. Three are all related to the Quiniasca Ridge housing development. <coughs> Two are for single family homes, 210 gallons per day each, which is the standard calculation, one for 1,416 gallons per day, which is an engineering calculation of, of what is presumed to be infiltration along certain lengths of pipe and certain that's diameters of pipe. That much. Boy, that's I mean, this is a fairly lengthy, this is like a mile of pipe, so it's a fair amount. So that, but wow. I know. So 1,400 plus gallons of infiltration per day. Yes, which is a again, it's a presumed engineering calc that's required. Yeah, it's like it doesn't. 10%. It doesn't yeah. mean it's going to ever happen, okay. or that Got it's it. going to happen in the first fifty years. 
But well, we already know that the town, the only reason why I'm reacting is that I haven't, from meetings I've had with Chris Robinson, we do have a fair amount of infiltration already. Yes. That it, it, the source of which is hard to define. It's yeah, in some cases over time we have found that people, for example, have roof gutters draining into the sewer system and we've Right, and they're, keep, and they're not paying for it. That's the thing that's kind of, right. you wonder, all right, 1,400 gallons that we all have, that actually the people who pay for it are the, the few sewers, thousand that were users. on the system. Yeah. And that, yeah. Right. Yeah. In other cases, it's endemic to any old system where there's old pipes and things happen over time. But these time. would be brand new pipes, no? These would be brand new pipes. So the reality is that number is probably a dramatic overestimate, but it's required as part of the engineering calculations to be accounted for. The other late-breaking wastewater re allocation request is for a custom, uh, I'm sorry, an accessory dwelling unit at three ravine court, and that would be for 140 gallons per day. Three ravine court. Own the property owners, Dean and Jude oh, okay. Mellon, I think it says. Just my neighbor, yes. That's, a, that's in your area? That's my neighbor, Dean. He's putting a, an addition on. Yep, so that would be for an accessory apartment. Okay. I would move to approve all three applications. I'll second that. Mary moves to approve them as presented. Mike seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, other than the fact that we have to sign some documents, I would move to adjourn. Mary moves to adjourn. I'll second, but one of these meetings is just a penciled in date. Is yeah. that correct? Is it the 10th or the 17th? So that was my, I was going to ask a question. We currently have three meetings back to back to back in December. My question is for three, the 10 and 11 and we've left 17 three, yeah. to be decided. Right. My suggestion might be to consider whether we really need to meet on the third or whether as far as a high level budget overview before we get into the details that I could present that to you Tenth. by email yeah. rather than meeting on the third when we're not, Peter and I are not yet going to have a fully right, fleshed out fine. document. If it's not, I'd rather see 10, 11, and 17 than see 3, 10, and 11. And that'd be our <laughs> scene. <laughs> well, so sorry, ahead. Jerry, that you don't like spending time with me, but. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, so, I'd rather. Have but that's have not going to mess up anything. Huh? Yeah, Doesn't no, change doesn't. our calendar or that's our approach. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, whatever is convenient. Just seemed like it would be a more efficient way to handle that, given where we will be. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think so. That we'll makes scratch a lot of sense. We should be sure to email Colleen and, and Jamie. Jamie. Thank you. Yeah. Did we have anything that was time sensitive for the third? <laughs> well, we've got one or two items floating out there. Uh -huh. One is not time sensitive. It's a request for a. a late property tax payment waiver that can certainly wait another week yeah. or so and there was a property tax appeal just the other day there's a proposed settlement in that appeal that i think would be a pretty easy thing for the board to okay. accept i can't think of anything but doing that all on the 10th i think we'll be okay if we i'm fine with that not have three night meetings in a row we did we had the vlct proposal but that certainly isn't uh, yeah, that can certainly wait. That mm -hmm. could wait. And your formal evaluation could wait uh, for a meeting. So Yeah, we'll need to figure out how and what, how you'd like to structure that and in what form or yeah. format. Yeah, we have time to do that. So, uh, <coughs> so, so then we're, we're planning to meet. The, the third then. But the 10th, the 11th, and the 17th. Mm -hmm. That would be Should we current. just stay okay. from the 10th right through yeah. to the 11th? <laughs> <laughs> Bring sleeping bags and... <laughs> <laughs> Watch movies late. Bring tonight. a couple of sandwiches. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. That all right. makes sense to you. Is that, does that make sense to you, Peter, as well? Yeah. Okay. So I will second the adjourning. <laughs> Mike seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. Aye. And good evening.